too, and you got to be wondering about this kickoff return right after last week with Miami. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. Brashard Smith had an incredible kick return. Joe Test did a great job calling that one. One of the Upmen takes it. And he'll get back past the 30 yard line to about the 34. Tyler Van Dyke will take the field. And Tyler Van Dyke, Orlando, is looking like the Tyler Van Dyke we saw two years ago. Yeah, he's a lot more comfortable back there in the pocket. And Coach Chris Ball has figured out a way to fix that offensive line up there in front of him. He's so much more confident in this game. And him and Coach Dawson, they look like they're on the same page and are running the offense in sync. It's not his offense. It's not Tyler Van Dyke's offense. It's both of their offense. Van Dyke in the gun to begin this one. First and 10 for Miami. Van Dyke with plenty of time to the boundary. Complete there to Jacoby George, who had a hat trick last week. Three touchdowns and a first down there on the first play of the game. Yeah, right there you see Cookman just playing off coverage. You know, look for them to do that the whole entire night tonight to try to not allow anything behind them. A 13-yard gain. Now a toss here for Miami. A short gain there to Colby Young. Colby Young, a Juco transfer last season, he has transformed his game. Yeah, just really big and amazing after the catch. You don't think that a body type that size should be as good as going through the middle as he, as he is, but he could get the ball and just take it to the house with that speed. Five-yard gain for Young there. Second and five for Miami. The keeper by Tyler Van Dyke, and Van Dyke picks up a first down a six yard gain as he gets taken down by Iverson Clement the corner for Bethune Cook. Yeah everybody doesn't re nobody realizes Tyler Van Dyke is 6'4 230 pounds he could bring some a little a little bit behind it. <laughs> you don't see him run that often because of that great arm he swings it out to his tailback Parrish and Parrish with a nice gain there of about four. I love the play calling of Coach Dawson so far. He knows Bethune Cookman's not going to allow them to go deep. So he's short intermediate passes to try to force that defense now to come up and try to make a play. Look for them to go play action deep over the top here soon. Miami going with tempo. Parrish gets through a tackler and taken down after another first down for Parrish. A gain of 13. This Miami offensive line just absolutely gets it done up front. And Parrish finishes with the physicality. Parrish bowling through some tacklers there. Miami huddling up now, taking their time. Van Dyke talking to his tailback, Henry Parrish. First and ten for Miami. Inside the 30-yard line of Bethune Cookman. There's Brashard Smith on the end around, trying to make a guy miss. Turns the corner, does pick up a couple there. When a team won't allow you to go deep, this is what you have to do. You have to find a way to stretch them laterally and force them to play every inch and protect every inch of the field. So love the nice combination of play calling that we've seen Miami have on this first drive so far, George. Five yard gain on the end around there. Actually, they'll mark it a four yard gain now. Ball on the 22 yard line. Van Dyke quick toss to Restrepo his roommate making a couple of guys miss and picks up the first down an eight yard gain there by Xavier Restrepo Miami does a great job of getting the ball to the perimeter with their bubble screens that one right there we got a chance to see big Jalen Rivers the left tackle for the Hurricanes get out there and, and get pick out a block in space so we're going to continue to see Miami do things like this to get the ball in playmakers hands. Those two are definitely always on the same page Orlando they golf together they eat together they're clearly roommates as I mentioned Parrish up the gut. Good run there five yard game. Look at the patience that you see Parrish running with right now. He sees the hole develop in front of him and he bursts through it and he just continues to play with physicality. He doesn't look to try to edge a guy. He says no I'm going to try to run you right over if you're in my way. Second and five for Miami from the 10 yard line. Van Dyke coming off a five touchdown game against Texas A&M. And Van Dyke with the keeper and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. A 10 yard scamper by Tyler Van Dyke adding to that touchdown total this time on the ground. 
Tyler Van Dyke does a heck of a job of just establishing himself out there, getting a great feel for the game. The defensive end comes down the line of scrimmage, pulls it, and he just gets in the end zone. It's a walk-in, so great job of executing this offense and starting off fast. That was one of the big keys for Miami today. Tyler Van Dyke, first rushing TD of the season, the second of his career. Extra point is up and good. Nine plays, 65 yards, four minutes and nine seconds off the clock, and Miami in business early. Miami getting it done. Tyler Van Dyke wheeling and dealing, but showing teams that he could get it done with his legs. Absolutely love that after your coach, Dawson. to South Florida the Canes with an early lead as they put up seven on their first drive Orlando. Yeah Tyler Van Dyke was spreading the ball around completing passes to five different receivers on that drive going five for five with 34 yards. He's definitely in the groove and the Hurricanes offense starting fast. Kickoff here for Miami Andres Borregales Juventsley Basil. And Darnell Dees back there for Bethune Cookman. Yeah, if you're Cookman, you, you got to find a way to back this Miami defense off. This defense is playing with some real confidence right now, George. I will tell you this, Orlando. Darnell Dees is a heck of a kick returner. He's their special teams captain. Uh, Preseason first team all swack last year. Had a good return against Miami. So you got to be careful for him for sure. Borregales with the kick and sails it over the head of Dees. So no worry about a return there. Luke Sprague, the starting quarterback today for Bethune Cookman. He was the backup the first two games, but certainly got a lot of run, Orlando. He's a big fella. Yeah, you look for him tonight, George, to just continue to go in the right direction, right? Last week he was able to get in the game, and now he's get, he has his opportunity to start. So he has to continue to build on the momentum and that big win that they had last week. Look for them to get the ball out of his hands as fast as possible to try to stress this Miami defense. Coach uh, Joe Gerbino told us, that this kid just soaks it all in, man. He's the first one in there. Beat him to the facility the other day. And here's Sprague in trouble. Gets out of it. Able to get some positive yardage out of that. Gets a four-yard gain there as the Canes almost wrapped him up in the backfield. Right there, he shows you what that, what that big 221-pound body frame could handle right there. Not going down on the initial contact and being able to pick up a couple yards for his offense. Second and six from the 29. Quick toss to the boundary to number two. Dakari Allen Johnson. Their two starters are Dakari Allen Johnson and Davino Ellington. Those are the guys you'll hear a lot from. A four yard gain there. Last week, Allen Johnson, six catches, 49 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, Dakari is a guy that they want to move all over the field. He's a bit smaller with only being 5'7", but they love his speed and his ability to stretch the defense. He's an Orlando native. A lot of Florida kids, obviously, on Bethune-Cookman, the Daytona Beach School. Spray with time out to the sideline to Allen Johnson again. And enough for the first down, it looks like, or at least it's going to be close. And they'll give it to him. They'll give him the first down, it looks like. So far, love the game calling of Coach Garbino. Just getting the ball to the edges, allowing his team to try to turn up the field, but spread that Miami defense out, forcing them to cover every inch of this field, whether it's vertically or laterally. There's a lot of speed on this Bethune Cookman squad. Don't get it twisted, man. Yeah, that's a nice team. You know, they got a lot of guys that run track and, and could absolutely go the distance. Jimmy Robinson in the backfield, Sprague. Pocket collapsing, flag on the play, ball is loose. Leonard Taylor picks it up, and he gets taken down near the five-yard line, but whistles everywhere and flags everywhere. Yeah, this one's going to be interesting. It's right around where it could possibly be holding, but also could be on the defense as well, hands to the face.
We're taking a look here. The long discussion by the officials. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding, number 79, penalty is declined. Intentional grounding, number five. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Loss of down, second down. That is a monster penalty, couple of penalties for Bethune. Yeah, Miami's defense just getting after it up the middle, right? I mean, you, you look at that. You, if you're Bethune Cookman, you cannot afford to, you know, put yourself in the hole with self inflicted wounds like Holden. A loss of 13 on the play now, and as you heard, a loss of down. So second and 23. Spray in the gun. Hands it off to Basil up the middle and Basil taken down immediately near the 25 yard line by Francis. Check that Francisco Maui Noah a four yard gain. You have the two Maui Noah brothers Francisco the middle linebacker transfer from Washington State and Francis is the offensive lineman the heralded offensive lineman the freshman starter at right tackle. Yeah this team wants to play downhill and as fast as possible. Third and 19, not the situation you want if you're Bethune Cookman against this Miami front. No Nigel Lee Kelly today, no Akeem Mesidor, and no Dean as well for Miami. That's a lot of firepower that this Miami defensive line is missing. What a great opportunity for young guys to get some snaps today. Sprague with time, throws over the middle. It is caught, but shy of the first down. It'll be about two yards shy there. Does Bethune Cookman go after a 17 yard gain here on fourth down Orlando but Sprague also holding his right shoulder as he took a shot. Yeah this is going to be very interesting because you kind of want to go if you're if you're Cookman because you're able to kind of capture some momentum but your quarterback is banged up and you don't know what's going on with them so I look for them to probably punt it right here. We've got. An injury timeout here. Let's see the hit that Sprague took here as he got pushed down to the ground mm. right there not a lot of physicality right there George he might be dealing with something that might have happened a little bit earlier on the drive he did get hit on the previous play as well let's not forget that fourth and two and you're right Orlando Anthony Frederick is out there to punt and for Miami. William Hawkins back there to receive and he fields it inside his five gets taken down at about the seven. Great job by Cookman right there covering that punt. 52 yard punt three yard return Miami will get the ball on offense in just a moment. In the end zone all these Canes fans cheering for you once more. Well, it feels really good. It felt especially good that Miami was ahead <laughs> seven to nothing as well. But uh, I think there'll be some more scored here in a minute. But uh, just an honor to be back for my alma mater and place I got a chance to coach. And I just love this place and love the people. And it's uh, good to be here. Now, I know you've got mem many memories. Do you have a favorite from your time as a player or a coach that you want to share with us? Well, as a coach, it's got to be when we played Notre Dame in 2017, and we, we beat the brakes off them pretty bad. But the, the fans were nuts. We, we, everything we tried scored, and uh, it was one of the most fun times I've had as a head coach. I know you and many of the Canes fans are rooting for the same thing this season for Mario Cristobal's crew. Thank you for your time and taking it to spend with us. Okay. Thank you Marilyn. George. Thank you Marilyn. Congratulations to coach Rick. Of course a teammate of ours here at ESPN and ACC Network a 15 yard gain there by Henry Parrish a moment ago. Love coach Rick. He's hard not to love. Van Dyke down the middle to Colby Young incomplete had it in his breadbasket Orlando. Yeah, um, you know, Coach Rick, just unbelievable head coach. I remember he recruited me while he was at Georgia, and I was happy to see him come back to the University of Miami. Tough drop there for Colby Young. Good pass there by Tyler Van Dyke. By the way, on the punt return, 37 was actually Xavier Restrepo. So on punts, we've got a lot of guys switching jerseys because of the double numbers. So Restrepo is 37 on punts. Van Dyke hands it off to Parrish. Parrish short gain there of three yards off left tackle. Tackle yeah, made by Eddie Walls. 
Right there, you watch the Hurricanes run it. Quick counter play and get big Arnaz Cooper out there. And he's the, about 15 yards down the field, George, getting a pancake block. So Hurricanes doing a really good job right now of mixing in some running pass. What do you make of Henry Parrish in year two at the University of Miami? <laughs> he's a tough physical runner. I mean, it, it's running back kind of by committee. But what I love about him the most is his physicality that he brings. So I would like to see Miami try to get him a little bit more involved in the passing game. Well, you see Xavier Restrepo involved in the passing game there. A monster game there over the middle. 20 yards from Van Dyke to Restrepo down at the 45-yard line. They continue to show just how much chemistry they have. And just a great feel, great touch pass right there by Van Dyke. And Restrepo continues to get those yak, the yards after the catch. Parrish up the middle. Not much there. Perhaps even a loss on the play. They'll say no gain. And a little extracurricular activity. On the boundary there between Colby Young and Iverson Clement. Yeah, these guys have been going at it from the first whistle. You know, Colby Young continues to show with that big body that he could get after it in the passing game or the running game. 6'5, and he can run block as well. No gain on that play. A.J. Allen now in the backfield for the first time, the transfer from Nebraska. Second and 10 for Miami. Van Dyke. Plenty of time. Has a man. It is caught and complete for a first down to Jacoby George. A gain of 11 on that one. Van Dyke just taking care of business out there, understanding that they're playing press bail as a defense. So Jacoby George is going to be able to create space at the top of that route anytime he wants to, just because of how Cookman's corners play. Jacoby George, again, a huge game last week against Texas AM and coming back from adversity. After muffing that punt to still have an incredibly great game for the University of Miami. Van Dyke hands it off up the middle. A.J. Allen with a gain of four. Yeah, you talk about Jacoby George last week. You know, after a muff punt, it's easy to get in your head and shut down. But this young man was able to stay focused and ended up with three touchdowns on the night. This coaching staff says he has no ceiling, George. Shelton Qualls Jr. on the tackle. You know that name. His father played in the National Football League. Coach Woody actually played with him in Canada. Young man went from safety to linebacker now. Van Dyke all day to throw. Fires over the middle to Restrepo and he comes up with it. Another big play for Xavier Restrepo down to the 15 yard line. Just a nice little seam route. Restrepo does a great job with his release at the line of scrimmage. But just stressing the defense and Van Dyke with a Van Dyme, right? Dimes. Hey, he's going to charge you for that one. 26 yard gain there. He trademarked that thing. You don't want to say that unless you're willing to pay up, pal. Hey, I saw his mom wearing the jersey last year, last week. But this is a dime. A couple times a game, this is him just understanding the catch radius of Restrepo right there. Restrepo's not a big guy, but yet Tyler Van Dyke understands exactly what Restrepo can go out there and do and puts the ball where only he could get it. A two yard loss there for Miami on that play. Second and 12. Ball on the 17. Van Dyke play action. Finds the tight end, McCormick. The six year player out of Oregon who's very familiar with Mario Cristobal. An incredible blocker for the University of Miami. It's like having an extra offensive lineman gains eight there. Yeah, it's 6'5, 260 pounds. Miami runs a nice little zone read. Tyler Van Dyke understands that he could get it right there to McCormick and let the big fellow get going. Third and three for Miami. 11th play of the drive for the Canes. A.J. Allen in the backfield to the right of Van Dyke. Restrepo in motion. Van Dyke to Allen. Makes a man miss and gets it to the end zone. Another touchdown for the Canes. A.J. Allen, the Nebraska transfer. Puts the Canes on the board and they're up 13. A.J. Allen just does an unbelievable job of making the guy miss at the second level. He's able to now transfer his weight 
and now hit that speed button to get across the goal line. Miami's doing a heck of a job right now, George, of mixing it up, run pass, and, and keeping Cookman on their heels because they're not knowing what's coming next. Borregales with the extra point is good. A.J. Allen, his first rushing TD of the season, his first rushing TD as a Miami Hurricane. The third of his career, 11 plays, 93 yards, and the Canes are up two touchdowns. Injured and will be out for the game at the moment, it looks like. For more on that, let's go to Maryland. Tyleg Bethea will take the field here for Bethune-Cookman. He did start last game for this team. And the coaching staff praised him for what he did do. He was a quarterback that was going to play tonight in certain packages anyway. But with this injury situation, it looks like it'll be his the remainder. Thank you, Marilyn. Kickoff goes and sails through the end zone. Here's the hit Sprague took, Orlando. What do you see there? Yeah, just the Miami defensive line doing a great job of collapsing that pocket and staying relentless with the rush. You know, that's the thing that you're going to have to worry about with going against this Miami team right now. They are deep at every position on defense, and they rush with a relentless effort. The first two weeks of the season, Bethune-Cookman started Walter Simmons, and Luke Sprague came in, but they are with Tyleek. Bethea, as Marilyn mentioned, they're going to roll with Bethea. Basil in the backfield with him. And they hand it off to Basil, who picks up a nice gain there, a gain of seven yards. Great job right there by, my, by Bethune Cookman on offense and just getting Bethea comfortable where it's a zone read option just right from the get go where he can read the end man on the line of scrimmage if he's given or if he's keeping it. So love the play call. Now let's get him acclimated to the game with some short passes passes as well. They have a good running back group there. Jimmy Robinson. Thank you. As we have a issue there officials fixing that. Basil, who we saw, had two TDs last week. Jimmy Robinson also. Terry Lindsay is in now. But they play a lot of backs, much like Miami does. Yeah, it's a room by committee. You know, no guy is selfish in that room, and everybody understands that they're going to have an opportunity to get some touches. But Thea completes the pass there to Terry Lindsay, a one-yard gain, tackle made by Jaden Wayne, the freshman out of Tacoma, Washington, played at IMG. Yeah, the Hurricanes are super excited about Wayne just with his ability, and they love how he's developed this offseason coming in ready to play. They'll give him a two yard gain, third and one coming up here. Canes might have jumped off there. Bethea takes a shot down the field, out of bounds, intended for Davino Ellington. But that will likely be a first down for Bethune Cookman. Defense number 18, five yard penalty results in a first down. Adam Savoy, our lead official. Self inflicted wounds by this Miami Hurricane defense. They show blitz. They got a young quarterback in there to just, get, just getting in the game, but they have to be able to hold their water and make sure they stay on sides. That's the type of stuff that Coach Cristobal does not want to see, will drive him nuts. First and 10 from their own 39. Bethea with some time rolling out of the pocket. He's going to toss it as he approached the line of scrimmage, and it'll be incomplete. Smart play there because Miami was already in his face. Yes. But I thought he was going to tuck it and run for a second there. Yeah, he got kind of right there in no man's land. But he was stressing out the defense. He was looking for Tink Boyd or or Allen Johnson to, to now practice scramble drill, right? And and try to get open. But those guys got to the sideline and kind of stopped on him. So he was in that place where he didn't really know what he was going to do next, George. Corey Flagg was in his face. A handoff to Basil. Basil picks up another nice chunk of change there as he gets nine yards on that play. It'll be third and one again for Bethune Cookman. Yeah, if you're Bethune Cookman, you got to be feeling pretty good with how you've been able to operate your offense so far. A couple first downs. Before this drive, they had only had one first down, but now they're moving the ball a little bit. A crucial third and one coming up right here for Cookman. And that 
it'll be the end of the first quarter. Bethune Cookman threatening to get into Kane's territory, but trailing by 14. What will Mario Cristobal and defensive coordinator Lance Guidry have? Tyleek Bethea at quarterback with an injury impacting that position. Well, Tyleek, I mean, he's been practicing throughout camp, and uh, you know, he's ready to step in and do what he needs to do. What is his skill set? Well, he he's, he actually is, and it's not just a passer, but he can run it too. Thanks. We look forward to seeing it. Thank you. And Bethune going the wrong way after Maryland chatted with Coach Woody there. A false start for the Wildcats. Yeah, Christopher Grant just moves a little bit too fast on that. He's their big tight end that they like in short yard situations. Third and six now from the 43. Kane showing blitz. Now they back off. But there, looking to the sideline to change the play. Kane's down, crowding the line of scrimmage again. Bethea drops back. Here comes pressure. Throws it. And it is almost picked off. Jaden Davis with the play there. Jaden Davis does a heck of a job to get a, a, a tip on the ball. But you got to get that if you're James Williams right there. You got to keep it alive. So almost tip drill, almost going the other way. Bethune will punt here. Anthony Frederick will punt to Xavier Restrepo wearing 37 on punts inside his own 10. Frederick inside his own 30. Miami leading 14 nothing. A line drive punt. Restrepo will receive, make a move, going down the middle, and taken down. Near the 30 yard line. Malik Stinnett with the tackle there. A 47 yard punt, 19 yard return. ACC Network football continues Saturday at 3 30 Eastern with Northwestern at number 21 Duke, followed by FAU, Florida Atlantic, and Clemson at 8 Eastern. Both games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Duke looking for back to back 3 0 starts for the first time since 2017 18 Orlando and Clemson. Last time Clemson went from preseason top 10 to unranked was 2008. And they went from nine to unranked after week one. Yeah, the ACC feels a little different this year with Duke coming out swinging week one and getting a huge win against Clemson. Miami hands it off there to A.J. Allen, who picks up a nice chunk of change there. He gets a first down after about a 15 yard gain. You got to love the patience of this young man. He's a, he allows the play to develop in front of him and then, you know, busts out to the outside and uses his speed to get to the edge. 16 yards for Allen. Shelton Quarles Jr. with the tackle for Bethune Cookman. Van Dyke, a career high passing last week versus Texas A&M. Throws it to the boundary to Jacoby George. He picks up about seven yards there. Miami continues to do a nice job of mixing it up. Now having 11 first downs in the game. Miami dominated with the time of possession over Bethune Cookman as well. So Miami's offense has got off to that far off start that they were looking for tonight. They'll give George eight yards on the game there. Second and two. Canes. Van Dyke. Moving out of the pocket, trying to avoid tacklers, spins around, and then throws it out of bounds. Nifty footwork there by Tyler Van Dyke. Ran one in and avoided a bunch of potential sacks there, Orlando. I mean, he looks like he's going through the ladder drill right here, man. Step up, spin move. Let, oh, here I am. No, you see me now, you don't. But great job of getting rid of that football at the end of that play, George, and not you know allowing yourself to take an unnecessary hit right there. Kane's trying to advance further into Bethune territory third and two from the 47 yard line. Allen in the backfield to the right. Of Van Dyke gets the carry right up the gut and picks up the first down down to the 39 yard line. A gain of. Six, they'll say. Actually, they'll mark him down at the 41, so a gain of six on the play. But Dylan Cookman does a great job of not allowing Miami to go deep, not allowing any offensive players to get behind. 
So what does Mario Cristobal and Coach Dawson do? They say, okay, we're going to run the ball behind this big offensive line that we got here at the University of Miami. Great job calling plays. First down at 10 from the Bethune 41. Van Dyke hands it off again to Allen. Allen right up the middle. Pick up a five on that one. I tell you what, George, Francis Mainoa just absolutely crushes his man and brings him seven yards down the field and finishes. You got to love the physicality right now that this team is playing with. Francis Mainoa last week did pick up a couple penalties, but one of them I felt like was undeserving. He just took down that Texas A&M defender and basically tackled him to the ground. We got to remember, this guy is still a true freshman. He hasn't played a ton of football, right? I thought he did a heck of a job of holding his own out there and shoring up that right side for Van Dyke. Van Dyke all day there to throw to Restrepo. Picks up another first down as he goes out of bounds at the 15-yard line. These two continue to show you the chemistry, man. Restrepo does a great job. This is one of those deep out routes, and he's able to catch it in bounds as well. 21-yard gain. Miami in business inside the red zone. Quick toss to Jacoby George down the sidelines into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Jacoby George adding more to the Miami lead. Miami continues to showcase all the different weapons and just take what the defense has given you. We're not going to try to continue to force the ball down the field. We understand that you guys are not going to allow us to do that. But what do they do? They keep on getting the ball to the edges. And that's great. Putting their ball in the Jacoby George's hand, a guy that this coaching staff talks about, George, and says has no ceiling. So nice to get him going and continue to keep him going. And this is where you start to see potentially the disparity in talent between these two squads. The extra point for Borregales upcoming. And it is no good. It looks like it may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Van Dyke, though, with his seventh touchdown pass this season, 42nd of his career. Jacoby George, fresh off three TDs last week, adds a fourth for the season, his fifth of his career. Miami, after a missed extra point, up 20 to nothing. 76% of 23andMe health customers surveyed reported taking healthier actions. 20. Missed extra point on their last drive, but capitalizing, to your point earlier, Orlando, all over the field with some of the explosive plays from their great receiving core and skill position players in general. Let's go down to Maryland for more. Jacoby George Saturday was the epitome of what this Canes team is. He said after he muffed the punt in that game, he needed to see the eye contact that Coach Shannon Dawson gave him. When Coach Dawson told him next play, you've got this. George said this week, I really believe that because I know that he believed in me. Tyler Van Dyke went over to him, he said, and told him you're about to have the best game of your career. And George did just that, catching the touchdown to seal the game and then being named ACC Receiver of the Week. His relationship with Tyler Van Dyke, as well as with his coach, is the epitome of what this Canes team is this season. Colby George has bought in. There was a lot of challenges in that regard. This past season, as the first of all staff took over, previous staff, a lot of the guys were holdovers, and George, very talented. You see that touchdown there, throwing up the U. Yeah, Miami just does a great job of getting the ball to their skilled players on the perimeter, running those bubble screens. And as you see, a guy like Jacoby George that has no ceiling has all the ability to take something like that to the house. Tyleek Bethea again in at quarterback now for Bethune-Cookman. Luke Sprague hurt in the first quarter. An eight-yard gain there by Terry Lindsay. Miami coming with pressure. Bethea goes down the field, incomplete, intended for Omari Stewart. I don't know that I love the call right there, George. Cookman has been doing a great job of running the football. But right here, it looks like it's coming back. Might be holding. Holding. Offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty, second down. That is Adam Savoy, our lead official. 
Yeah, right there, Fergulis just doesn't keep his feet moving. You know, that's where you're going to get yourself in trouble as an offensive lineman. When you're going against guys that are athletically gifted, you got to make sure that you set back with depth and keep those feet moving until you hear that whistle's blown. Second and 12 now for Bethune Cookman. The young man Bethea put in a challenging position. Francisco Maui Goa showing blitz. Here they come, and the Canes swallow up Bethea near the 15 yard line. A sack there by Harrison Hunt. Yeah, Harrison Hunt, just motor guy, just nice little TET -T -T stunt by the two defensive tackles, him and Leonard Taylor right there. And Hunt able to edge his guy and get to the quarterback right there. Miami's fifth sack of the season. Ruben Bain also met the quarterback there, the youngster, the freshman from Miami North. Miami, excuse me, Miami Central. Played over 60 snaps against Texas A&M due to injuries. But they love him. He's a legacy player. His uncle Tolbert Bain played here at the University of Miami. And on third and 18, the Wildcats were stuffed by the Canes. And no gain there on the play. Yeah, if you're a Cookman, you got to look at trying to stay ahead of the down and distance. You've been running the ball really well, but Miami has dominated on everything. Right now, Miami has three drives, three touchdowns. In the first down department, they have 14 touchdowns to Cookman's two, and they are crushing it in the yards. But if you're a Cookman, you just need to settle down a little bit and continue to run the football and no more self inflicted wounds. Anthony Frederick. Inside his own five, Restrepo waiting for the ball at his own 40. Fair catch near the 45 yard line, and that's Miami will, where Miami will begin their next drive. A 38 yard punt, no return. The Canes looking to tack on more. First victory as a head coach last week against Savannah State. Canes, handoff up the middle. Cheney with a huge run there as he gets down near the 25 yard line. We're seeing this Miami offense just roll. It doesn't matter what running back. Parrish starts it off, then Allen gets an opportunity, and now it's Cheney that just bursts through the middle of that offensive line between Lee and Cooper on that right side. 26 yard gain for Don Cheney. Looks, looks good out there. It's good to see him back out there. Struggled with injuries early in his Canes career. Homestead, Florida native. Getting healthy at the right time, though. Gets it again. Big hole on the left side, dragging defenders and gets another first down after and he's still going. <laughs> what a run there by got, Donald Cheney. Gotta love those big mosh pits. When those offensive linemen get up there and they see the running backs not going down, they want to get behind and keep pushing. But Donald Cheney just does a great job of bursting through the hole. And then you see everybody come to the party to try to get as much yards as possible. I thought they were going to carry him to the goal line, George. I thought so, too. I thought he was going to be down earlier. After a 17-yard gain there, Cheney is still in the backfield to the left of Van Dyke. Van Dyke, three big plays in this game to his roommate, Xavier Restrepo. One of 20, one of 26, and one of 21 yards. But on the ground here, Cheney makes a man miss. Hit him with the hezzy as he gets down inside the five. You're seeing the change of pace. You know, that's the unique thing about this deep running back room. Cheney right here, a little bit of hesitation in the hole, and just now it burst and is able to go get about eight yards right there. Miami right now George 16 first downs for this football team offensively second and one for Miami after the nine yard gain by Cheney they are knocking at the door down to the three yard line can still get a first down here the handoff to Cheney walks into the end zone touchdown Miami and strumming the guitar Donald Cheney Jr. A three yard scamper and Miami is rocking now. Got to give the love to the big boys up front. You know Mario Cristobal said the reason why Tyler Van Dyke feels so comfortable back there is because some new faces up front. You saw that last drive. It was all round and pound run game run game. So shout out to the big boys up front. You have an offensive line coach. <laughs> 
You know that offensive line is going to be strong if he has anything to say about it. The extra point is up and good. Donald Cheney Jr., his second rushing TD of the season, sixth of his career. Cheney, all rush yards of running backs. The last drive, all Donald Cheney Jr. Yeah, he was able to take it and put it on his shoulders along with that offensive line up front. Miami right now, George, six runs of 10 yards or plus. Just big play after big play for this offense right now. 141 yards on the ground for Miami. Borregalis with the kickoff. Sails over Dees' head. And Thune Cookman will begin on their own 25 yard line. Saturday, watch ACC huddle throughout the day. Well, news, notes, and highlights. It begins at 2 Eastern, the 90 minute pregame show, and caps off the evening following FAU and Clemson with a complete wrap up of all the day's action. Are you buying Clemson is not Clemson anymore? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta trust my eyes. Oh, really? I, I do have to You're, trust my eyes. That's a hot take, Orlando Franklin. I know it's a hot take, but it's just a take, George. I'm watching that football team, and they weren't ready when the whole world was watching. So I don't think that they are that team and that juggernaut that they have been for the past decade. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, and Marilyn Payne with you here. Jimmy Robinson up the middle and swallowed up immediately for a loss there of two on the play. Tackle made by Corey Flagg Jr. This Miami defense allows these guys to play fast downhill. Not a lot of decision making. You see Corey Flagg sees it all the way and goes out there and makes a tackle for a loss. Second and 12 for Tyleek Bethea. And the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman looking to the sideline for some instruction from offensive coordinator Joe Garbino. off again to Robinson the captain on offense nothing doing there no game third and long coming up third and 12. Miami's defensive line just continues to be able to wreak havoc in the backfield right now that's where you're seeing the biggest mismatch on this field offensive line and defensive line and Miami's offensive line and defensive line have been taking care of business since they kicked off a couple a couple hours ago. Miami's defensive line crowding the line of scrimmage. Extra backers there. Here comes the blitz. And they take down Bethea. Jacob Lichtenstein. South Florida kid, USC transfer two seasons ago. Taken down Bethea, and it is fourth down. Bethune forced to punt. Love the call by Coach Gritty right there. You put double A gap mug, knowing that you're going to bring more than Bethune Cookman can handle. It's very simple. Every man has a gap. Who's going to get to the quarterback first? Love the call on third down. Miami gets off the field. Third sack tonight, a loss of seven on that play. Frederic to punt near his end zone. Restrepo to field it. Fair catch at the 43 yard line and Miami will begin their next drive there a 41 yard punt no return Tyler Van Dyke and company ready to cook again games FSU champions back in 2021 you and I were at Florida State last week in Miami this week your alma mater Tyler Van Dyke back there with time and finds Colby Young for a catch there they'll say he caught it and a gain of nine on the play near the sideline. Kobe Young, 6'5", 215 pounds, and he needed every inch of that 6'5 body frame to lay out and go get that catch for Tyler Van Dyke right there. Donald Cheney back in the backfield after the gain in nine. And they give it to Cheney, cutting towards the sideline, and gets hit near the 40-yard line. A pickup there of approximately seven. Love the fact that he bounced it right there. But what I love even more, George, is Jacoby George and Ray Ray Joseph on the exterior blocking down the field to try to spring um, Donald Cheney to a, a few extra yards. First and 10 for Miami from the 41 yard line of Bethune. Bethune showing blitz. 
And a pitch there to Ray Ray Joseph, the young freshman who they're very excited about. He is lightning quick, taken down there. Four yard loss on the play. Yeah, you see this Cookman defense doing a great job of just rushing and staying there in their gap integrity right there. You see Walls, he jets up the field. He's able to create a pile and not allow Joseph to bend that corner right there. And it lines up in a great play for a tackle for a loss. Ray Ray Joseph from Miami Edison. Henry Parrish back in the game for Miami at tailback. Second and 14, the 45 of Bethune Cookman. Parrish puts his head down. Picks up a nice chunk of change there. A gain of nine as it'll be third and more manageable and the rain is coming down now. A nice run by Parrish right behind Rivers and Cohen. The left side of that offensive line. But I love that Miami continues to keep their game plan. If you want to play back on your heels and not allow us to go and take shots down the field, we'll continue to run the ball until you want to give us an eight man box. Right now, Miami just dominated 157 yards rushing. Sparrow on the tackle for Bethune Cookman, third and five here. The Wildcats showing blitz. Here they come. They pick it up, Miami does, and a toss over the middle for a first down to Colby Young. Miami inching closer to the red zone after a gain of eight. This offense under Coach Dawson looks so different. You look at, you know, Paris picking up the blitz, but Tyler Van Dyke staying calm and knowing that he has time for Kobe Young to get out of his break. And those guys are able to hook up for another first down. First and 10 for the 25 as the rain comes down. I know Maryland is a vet. She's got her rain gear ready to roll down there on the sideline. Bethune Cookman showing blitz again, and here they come. Miami picks it up. Van Dyke to the end zone! Incomplete! Intended for Colby Young. Colby saying he had it, but the official telling him he bobbled it and did not control it. A beautiful ball by Van Dyke right there. Just a moon ball to come down the right time. Colby Young just got to squeeze it a little bit harder, but he might, might have got it. Good play there by Iverson Clement, the cornerback for Bethune Cookman. Put his hand up at the right time to interfere on that pass. Second and 10 for Miami. At the 25. They hand off to Parrish, bounces it out to the left side, picks up the first down. An 11 yard gain for Henry Parrish. Let's go down to Maryland. Interesting weather update. The rain is actually not falling on the home sideline completely. It's covering the whole field and the visitors, but the home sideline is dry. So welcome to Miami, folks. <laughs> That's the way they designed this place. Is that Miami or is that like the construction of the building? To, That's a to little bit of both. Take care of the, 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 the home not, team. <laughs> guys, it's not the building. It's just reality. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 for Miami here. Van Dyke play action to Young. Dives into the end zone, loses the football. Flags are flying on the play. Bethune Cookman will recover in the end zone. It'll be a touchback, but let's see what the laundry's about. Yeah, Kobe Young does a great job in space right there, creating separation. Clement recovered it in the end zone. The officials huddling here. <laughs> Ruling on the field is a catch. Fumble recovered by the defense for a touchback. Personal foul targeting defense number eight. That play is under further review. The targeting would be on Johnny Harris, the third of Sanford, Florida, a junior college transfer for Bethune Cookman. But it didn't look like he broke the plane. Yeah, it doesn't look like he broke the plane right, right there. And, and Johnny Harris just trying to play fast out there, George. You know, Kobe Young puts it away, and it's like bang, bang. But it, I don't think he broke the plane at all. And unfortunately, it definitely does look like targeted. Yeah, he led with the helmet there. I know people are going to say, well, it wasn't helmet to helmet contact. You still can't lead with the helmet. Can't lead with the helmet, and that's where it gets scary, with the side of the head right there. 
Right, that's where guys get Oh, he did actually up. make helmet to helmet on that particular angle. You can see it. It looked like he had hit the shoulder pad on the previous angle. Mm -hmm. So obviously a dangerous play. And he lost a shoe. <laughs> yeah, I was in about the to process. say. Colby Young. Colby Young running out of his shoes right there. This one now, if they see that angle, that's an easy call down. Yeah, you know, Johnny Harris, great football player, tr was a track phenom back in high school. But right there, just right on the side of that helmet, and it's a crown of the helmet, George. That's that's the thing, right? It's the putting down, the action of putting down your head and hitting with the top of your helmet right there. Officials still taking a look. Miami had scored on every drive thus far. Yeah, Miami's offense continues to show how explosive they could be. It, you know, you look at the runs, the passes that they have had so far. Six explosive runs. Six explosive runs for over 10 yards for this offense. Allowing the big offense alignment to just go out there and take control of the football game. You know, you look at this Bethune-Cookman defense, and they like to play press bail. They don't like to allow you to get behind them defensively. So they want to keep everything in front. I like this game plan by Coach Dawson just getting after it. Let's oh. take a look here again. Yeah, he definitely didn't break the plane, and it looks like targeting to me. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to get. And, and like I said earlier, you know, I think it's because when you look at Johnny Harris, it, the first thing that hits is the top of his helmet. It's, it's the crown of your helmet, right? And we already know how dangerous those hits could be when you hit a guy on the side of his head. Adam Savoy, our lead official, still taking a look. Have you taken some time here? Yeah. Well, it's a big call, right? Because you, what do you have? To, you got to miss the next two quarters if you you're tossed out the game. So this is a, a huge call right now. You know, if you're you're Johnny Harris, you don't want your family to probably come down to the game and want to come check you out against the Miami Hurricanes and playing, you know, in Florida. It, this is a big game for that young man. So yeah, a lot of kids on these rosters have played against each other. Yeah. To your point, in high school. Maybe even teammates in some cases. Yeah, so I like this that this referee crew right now is taking their time with the call and not just rushing to it. And now Adam Savoy, our lead official, is ready for the call. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. The oh. result of the play is a recovery by the defense for a touchback. First down, Bethune Cookman. Wow. So they believe that he did not lead with the crown of the helmet, that he must have been leading with the face mask and uh, not targeting it. Yeah, I think it was probably a little bit more of a bang bang play maybe, right? I mean, because where Jacoby Young catches that football right there, but a huge momentum shift for this Bethune Cookman team. I, I don't know that. I mean, again, the, the other angle we had it showed the helmet to helmet. Like if that's not targeting. Then I, I just don't know what is. Yeah, that's where the rules get a little bit gray sometimes, right? That's the first turnover of the game. Bethune. Self-inflicted wounds, Miami. Two previous drives, three and out. Bethea hands it off to Robinson up the middle. Picks up a couple of yards. A little over a minute to go here in the half. Bethune continues to try to use Harris and Dees and Franklin up front. Four-yard gain. And a timeout here. Miami's going to talk this thing over defensively. Yeah, if you're Coach Cristobal right now, you're talking about can't let him in. This game last year, I was here with Maryland. And Tyler Van Dyke and Xavier Restrepo put on a show. You see Michael Redding there. Miami one big in that one. Yeah, they were able to go out there and get the job done, both running the football and throwing it. But still, there was a lot of work to be done for this Miami team. 
Love the timeout, though, George, with this coaching staff. Settle the defense down. Let this defense know that before half, we can't give up anything cheap. We've got to go out there and play fundamentally sound football. Robinson in the backfield. Takes the handoff up the middle, and it feels like Bethune-Cookman going conservative here. It'll be a gain of one on the play. Timeout Miami again, defensive. Now the mindset has changed. It has shifted completely. Miami's looking to keep the gas on the, uh, the foot on the gas pedal, get this ball back, and try to see if they could get in the touchdown. Yeah. Remember, remember last week against Texas A&M, they, they went down the field right before half, 44 seconds, six plays, 75 yards, and scored a touchdown. Miami with one timeout left, and to your point, Looking to play aggressive here to get the ball back one more time. I'm guessing we won't see much of the starting group in the second half. Maybe the first drive, if I had to guess. Yeah, Coach Cristobal, old school offensive lineman, head coach with an old school mentality. I bet they will come out in the first half and play or play the first series in the second half just to keep these guys used to going in at halftime and making adjustments. Third and five for Bethune Cookman, Miami. Trying to get their defense off the field. Showing blitz. Handoff to Robinson up the middle, and he is wrapped up by Francisco Maui Noah, two yards shy of the first down. And Miami will hold, depending on what Bethune Cookman will do here. Miami will take another timeout, and Bethune Cookman, who thought about going for a second, will trot to the sideline to chat. Francisco Maui Noah coming over from Washington State, older brother of um, Francis Maui Noah. Francis Maui Noah, but this Miami coaching staff loves him, loves his physicality, loves the fact that he's sideline to sideline, and he's like the energizer bunny out there. He just keeps going and going and going. He's a big thumper, had a pick six last year with Washington State. For more on that, let's go to Maryland. Kiko, the older brother, actually told me that growing up he played most. He played most at quarterback while Francis played most of his time on D-line. He said Francis used to spend all of his effort on becoming a better defensive lineman. And as the guys got older, they realized their bodies fit other positions better. That's how they ended up where they are now. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely one way to, to do it, Marilyn. You can see those bodies a little different, that's for sure. Bethune. Cookman with another punt, a line drive punt to Restrepo, who will fair catch it inside his 30. Bethune with five punts, only two first downs in this game. A 45 yard punt, no return, and Miami will look to try to put up more points on the board. Yeah, Miami's offense continues to take little baby steps forward, right? We've seen it in the first half right now. Four, five drives, four touchdowns. And you got to think right now, if you're this Miami offense, that you just left one out there on the field. So look for them to be as aggressive as possible. I, might, I think we might just be throwing it on this one. A.J. Allen in the backfield. Miami will begin this drive on their own 26-yard line. Four receivers out there. Restrepo in the slot. Van Dyke going to work. Plenty of time. Over the middle to Restrepo. It's caught. And taken down near midfield. Restrepo hurrying this thing up. A 23-yard gain. Miami on the move already. Yeah, nice option route by Restrepo right there to go get a, yet another explosive play for this Miami offense. Two wideouts to each side. Van Dyke. Pressure coming. Steps up in the pocket. Now rolling to his right. Throws on the run. He's got a man. George catches it, but they're going to say he's out of bounds. Tyler Van Dyke does a heck of a job of extending this play right here. Let's take a look. Yeah, mm. just stepped on the white. Mm. Just an inch over that white line right there by Kobe George. Second and 10 for Miami from their own 49-yard line. 39 seconds to go here in the half. Nice little opportunity right here to huddle up catch your breath and now take another shot down the field if you're Miami. Tyler Van Dyke takes the snap throws it down the sideline to Restrepo and Restrepo runs out of bounds near the 
25 yard line at the 27 a first down for Miami a gain there of 24. You know, Restrepo just tightrope, right? You know, understanding where he's at on the field, but great body control to make sure at least one foot comes down in inbounds. 33 seconds left in the half. Van Dyke got time, goes over the middle, got a man, touchdown! Touchdown, Miami. Brashard Smith had the big kick return last week, now gets a receiving touchdown, and the Canes make quick work on that drive. George, that might be the play of the game right there. You know, Bethune Cookman is playing cover two all the way. They're playing Tampa two. The middle linebacker dropping straight back. Tyler Van Dyke does a great job of holding the safety with his eyes and exposing the middle of the field right there and getting a huge touchdown to Brashard Smith. Four plays, 74 yards, 35 seconds off the clock. Borregales, the extra point is up and good. Miami tacks on seven more and lead 34 to nothing with 27 seconds left here in the first half. Yeah, they beat their season record from a week ago. They scored in 44 seconds last week. They scored in 35 right here. But just a beautiful route by Rashard Smith, exposing the middle of that defense. When Bethune Cook was showing cover two, that means middle of the field's open. And Rashard Smith exposes that defense. I understand there's a talent discrepancy here, but we saw Miami put up points quickly, to your point, last week against Texas A&M. This thing is starting to look like a Miami football team again. Yeah, no drop off, right? I mean, you get you could get up for the big time games, and by all means, Texas A&M is coming in your house. That is a big time game. But how do you respond on a short week against an opponent that's a little less than you? And it's nice to see this Miami Hurricanes football team come out swinging, where there is no drop off. Coach Cristobal talked about that in our meetings this week. He didn't want to see a drop off from this team, and it's great to see his team answer that bell and scoring 34 points in today's first half. Kickoff here by Borregales. And Dees fair catches it. Tyler Van Dyke putting up big numbers. This trio here. You want to talk about a big three, Orlando? You see it right there. Yeah, Tyler Van Dyke, those, those weapons. And both of those guys, Restrepo and George, could do it all. They could do it on the outside and the inside. As you can see, already tonight. Restrepo over 100 yards, 120 yards. Kobe George in the end zone and 47 yards. Van Dyke with two TDs in the air, one on the ground. Showing off his wheels earlier in the game. And now Miami's defense, who has been all over the field today, back out there. Bethea in the gun. Hands it off. No, he'll. Yeah, he does. He does hands it off to Basil. I thought he kept it there for a second. Apologies on that RPO. Not much there. Maybe a loss of one. Yeah, Chaz Williams does a great job of just getting in the backfield right at the snap and getting the tackle. And that looks like it'll do it for the first half. Miami putting on a clinic here. To your point, Orlando. No drop off from the big win against Texas A&M. The drill, you know what he's like, you know his intensity, you know his attention to detail, Orlando. Yeah, he's a guy that doesn't matter. Don't look at the score. You know, he's looking for guys to go out there and execute. And as I could imagine, in the second half, we're going to see some guys go out there and get an opportunity to play. Let's toss it down to the third member of our team, Marilyn Payne. Orlando, you nailed it. Mario Cristobal identified the few mistakes his team did make in the first half, namely the missed point after touchdown, the fumble in the end zone, and the, yes, one lone penalty that the Grains got flagged for. He was frustrated with all of that. He said, those are the places we could be better, so I hope that we will be. I asked him how much longer he will play any of his starters, and with some gamesmanship, he said, we're already playing twos and threes, so you know where it's headed. Thank you, Marilyn. And this is a good opportunity, as you mentioned earlier, Orlando, to get some of these young guys an opportunity. Yeah, you want to develop, right? If you're Miami, you understand how your season shakes up. You know, you finish this thing with eight in a row ACC games. So you want to make sure you could get some of these young guys ready to play so you can rely on them later on as the season progresses. And 
Tyleek Bethea begins the second half with a pass to Tink Boyd over the middle. A five yard gain there for Bethune Cookman. Second and five coming up. Bethea came in because Luke Sprague was hurt early in the first quarter. Javensley Basil now to his right in the backfield. Curious to see how Bethea reacts in the second half now that he's gotten some time to chat with the coaches and wasn't just kind of thrown into the action. Bethea drops back, pressure coming, steps up, and you see the wheels here, and he slides just in front of the marker. A four yard gain, one yard shy of the first down. Let's go down to Maryland again. Bethune Cookman's Raymond Woody explained that he continues to talk with his training staff about the opportunity for Luke Sprague to go back in the game. He said, I want him to have that opportunity, but they keep telling me it's not likely, it's probably not an opportunity, so it's Tyleek Bethea's the rest of the way. Thank you, Marilyn. Third and one here for the Wildcats. Miami showing blitz. Here they come. Quick toss there and a completion for a first down to Tink Boyd. Yeah, just a nice route. Beating the man off the line of scrimmage. Nice, easy um, route right there. And Bethea is able to hit Tink Boyd right there in stride for Cookman's now third first down of the night. Dennis Richard in coverage there. 23 first downs to three. Bethea. With time, not anymore. Flushed out of the pocket by Leonard Taylor. He'll take off and run, and will pick up a couple of yards there. A four-yard gain for Bethea on the run, and this is probably what you'll see more of in this half. Coach Woody had told Maryland when he was inserted in the game that he's got that skill set. He's got a motor. And he's got some wheels. Yeah, right there. You know, four plays for Bethune Cookman to start this second half, and two of them have been runs that plays that have resulted in a run by the quarterback. Defensively, the quarterback is the hardest person to account for. So I, I anticipate that as well, George, seeing a lot more of that in the second half. Bethea. Under pressure, throws one up, and his receiver didn't see it. Pressure there by Corey Flagg. Receiver was Terry Lindsay, the running back on a wheel route. He just didn't see the ball at all. Yeah, Corey Flagg just right in the A-gap, stressing Bethea out, where he has to throw it a little bit faster than he would like right there. But that's all because of Corey Flagg and being able to time up the snap count and get a great rush on the passer right there. Third and six for the Wildcats. Need Bethea. Your Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Need your best play right here to continue to have this drive, have success on this drive. Miami drops back in coverage. Bethea is going to take off and run, and he gets taken down by the shoulder pads. He's going to be near the sticks after a six yard gain. Core flag is flying all over the field right now. First down for Bethea. Yet another first down for this Wildcat offense, but as you can see, Tyleek Bethea putting it all on the line on that last one. This drive important for Bethune Cookman because they really couldn't get much going outside of one drive they got into Miami territory in the first half. If you're Cookman, you're building the confidence. Two first downs to start the second half. Bethea. Rolling to his left, throws to the sideline and sails one over the head of his intended receiver, Tink Boyd. Yeah, Tink Boyd just tried to get, climb the ladder on that one, but wasn't able to come down with it. That they has to settle down to, and now just think about it, where you could, you have some time. You don't have to rush through anything. He has to have a better feel of the game. Hasn't played a lot of snaps this year for this Cookman offense. Hopefully he's able to clean that up as this drive or as this game goes along. Jimmy Robinson checks in, the captain in the backfield. They hand it off to Robinson up the middle. A short game, but he loses the football. And it looks like Bethune Cookman has recovered. Recovery there made by Christian Loving. Yeah, just great job right there. Kristen Lovin staying active and staying alive, playing through the whistle to regain possession for this Cookman offense. Third and 13 for the Wildcats. 
Miami showing pressure at the line of scrimmage. If they are checking with the sideline. I don't know how many third and 13 plays you can drop regardless of who you are. Yeah, if you're Coach Gurdjie, you got to be thinking of bringing pressure right here. And there it comes. They pick it up. A quick toss to the boundary is complete to Davino Ellington, but a flag on the play. Be shy of the first down anyway. Back near the original line Outside. of scrimmage. Defense number six, five yard penalty, third down. Here's the offside play. Yeah, Damari Brown just tries to get that jump right there, but a little bit too early. Third down and eight, Third down and eight now for the Wildcats. They're in Miami territory. Bethea. Pressure coming. He throws, finds a man, Davino Ellington at the 35, hit and spun around, and then taken down inside the 30-yard line. An excellent play there by Davino Ellington, the senior out of Panama City, Florida. Yeah, showing his physicality on right route. Not often do you get to see wide receivers show that they could be physical, but Davino Ellington just took everything that Miami's defense had, shot after shot, and held on to that football. First down for the Wildcats. They're in Miami territory at the 29-yard line. Bethea starting to look a little more comfortable out there. Bethea under pressure. Spins out of trouble and loses the football. The ball is on the ground. Miami recovers it. Jacob Lichtenstein. The Broward County kid recovers the football there for the Canes. Yeah, you know. Great job of, of Jacob right there playing through the whistle. But man, this Miami defense right now, another forced fumble. Big play just when Cookman is, is knocking at the door and moving the ball. Miami's defense able to come up huge by playing and working their butt off to make sure that they can have a big time play. Francisco Maui Noah causing the fumble. up 34 nothing here at Hard Rock. The Wildcats cough up the football here. Francisco Maui Noah helmet to the ball. Lichtenstein with the recovery. That fumble on the 11th play of the drive for Bethune Cookman. That was the longest drive today. Does a great job George of just you know Kiko Maui Noah does it like times it up. It's like the game is moving slower for him where he's able to see it and put that helmet right on that football right there. We have a quarterback change. Emory Williams is in the game. He handed it off to A.J. Allen for a gain of three there, but there are flags on the play. So Tyler Van Dyke's day is done. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, offense number 70, 15 yard penalty, and second down. Javion Cohen, the Alabama transfer. As you can see right now, Coach Cristobal furious with the big guy right there, the junior. You don't want to be hurt in this football team, especially when you have a quarterback change. You want Williams to be able to get comfortable back there and got to play smart with such a big lead. Williams, the freshman from Milton High School. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Van Dyke today was 19 of 23 for 247 yards, three TDs, one of those on the ground. Williams drops back, got time, goes to the boundary. It is caught by Jacoby George. I love that Coach Dawson, even though there's a quarterback change, we're going to leave our guys out there to settle Williams down in the pocket. It's, you know, big body guy has the NFL body type of of a quarterback where you continue to see the speed of these Miami receivers where they're able to create separation whenever they would like to in the secondary of this Bethune Cookman defense. This Miami offense has been cooking today. Seven runs of 10 plus yards, receptions of 20 plus yards. They've got six of those, five of them to Xavier Restrepo. Williams dancing back there, sidearms it to Colby Young. Young trying to stretch for the first down near the 40 yard line. He'll be just shy, it looks like. A 16 yard gain.
for Colby Young. Great job by the offensive line, giving Williams the time that he needs, but an even better job by Colby Young, you know, running that deep in cut and being able to show up for his quarterback right in the middle of that football field. Fourth down and short here, and Miami's offense will stay on the field. This is where you get better, right? If you're Miami, you're, you're trying to work on little things, right? You might want to pull out a play and see if this is something that you could run later on down the line in a fourth and short situation. Bunch formation for the Canes. They hand it off. Bounces over the right side as A.J. Allen picks up the first down and then some as he's dropped near midfield at the 47 yard line. One gap at a time by A.J. Allen right there to go get the first down. So Tyler Van Dyke's day is done. This past weekend, though, big game for Van Dyke, big game for Tua. So if you were a Miami quarterback, it was a heck of a time to be you this past weekend. And Tyler Van Dyke again today. A nice day with three touchdowns and 247 in the air. Two of those in the air, those touchdowns, one on the ground. Showing his versatility. <laughs> Hand off up the middle as they cross midfield. The five yard gain for A.J. Allen. Miami continues to go with that running back by committee room. You see A.J. Allen, um, you know, Tim Harris, son of, of, you know, Ice Harris, legendary coach Booker T. Washington, does a great job with that running back room, and everybody's getting an opportunity today. Don Chaney now in the backfield with the youngster, Emory Williams, the true freshman. Emory Williams, big kid, 6'5", 220. They are very high on him. Cheney with a nice move hesitation move and bounces out to the left side. It'll be two yards shy of the first down as, after a three yard gain and both guys getting in the game or multiple guys getting in the game rather at running back. But A.J. Allen was someone that coach Dawson told us to watch out for. He felt like this could be one of those games. He gets a lot of carries. He leads them in carries right now. Nine carries for 52 yards and Cheney in there. Now he's got six for 65. Both guys with touchdowns. Yeah, they've done a great job of mixing it up and giving everybody an opportunity. I'm wondering when does Chris Johnson get his opportunity to freshman? There's a possibility that that could happen. And Cheney bounces off a defender, picks up the first down, and gets inside the 40 yard line to the 38, an eight yard gain. The Canes are just dominating the line of scrimmage, and their running backs are taking full advantage of that. Yeah, Donald Cheney Jr. just burst through the hole, and it's just a little bit too much to handle for Kaiwan Harris, the free safety, and continues to fall forward. Could have driven my truck through that hole. Me and you could get through that hole, George. Maybe I, I, I told you the last <laughs> couple of weeks that you'd have to drag me or carry me through the hole. I think that one, at least, I could have had a chance. I'll put you on my back, baby. <laughs> you do that every week, partner. <laughs> Emory Williams down the field. He's got a man. It is... Complete. They'll give him the catch at the 16-yard line. 22-yard gain there. Emory Williams to Brashard Smith. He did get two. He got two feet down there, actually. Tackle there made by Omari Hill Robinson. Yeah, Brashard Smith shows you how strong those hands are, right? I mean, goes up and gets it. Knows that he's going to get the hit. He absorbs it and gets those two feet down. Big time play for his young quarterback to continue to let his quarterback build that confidence. And Williams looking good out there. Getting some experience. Remember now. As they hand it off up the middle A.J. Allen spinning around getting taken down near the five yard line down to the seven. Tackle made by Stephen Sparrow for Bethune Cookman. Right there George we saw. Amor Williams carry out the fake after after handing it off to A.J. Allen. Look for this young man to keep one down here. Nine yard gain, 10th play of the drive for the Canes. Second and one. Hand off up the middle. And met with some resistance inside the five, gets the first down. Gaggle of defenders there. Take down A.J. Allen after a three-yard gain. 
Yeah, Cookman on defense just did a great job of shooting their gap, understanding gap integrity on defense, and everybody not being moved out of that gap to stop Miami right there and not let them in the end zone. First and goal for Miami from the four yard line. Five seconds on the play clock. They hand it off to Allen, bouncing it out. Gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. A.J. Allen, his second touchdown of the game. And Miami running away with this one. Right there, just speed kills. A.J. Allen does a great job of, you know, getting the ball, reading this thing out one gap at a time and just saying I'm just faster than you. I'm going to take the edge right here. Great job by the Miami offensive line. Right now we have Matthew McCoy playing the left guard position for Cohen as we saw Mario Cristobal you know brought the big fellow over and said hey your night might be over after that personal foul earlier. Borogales with the extra point is good. 11 plays 69 yards 6 minutes and 55 seconds off the clock a time consuming drive kept off by the will be next week. The ACC is looking bright, right? A lot yeah. of touchdowns coming out of the ACC right now. ACC looking strong. They fared well against the SEC already. And Louisville and Jeff Brom putting up big numbers. Miami putting up big numbers too. 41 is pretty big and 499 in total yardage. Williams was in the game earlier. They are dominating this game 499 yards of total yardage 27 to 5 in first downs. Now Bethune Cookman with the ball here first and 10. In trouble and Bethea goes down. A number of Canes there making a contribution. I like the call. You know, you got Smith coming off the edge, and you just said, you, we're not allowing these guys. Demary Brown is coming as well. We're, we're not going to allow Bethune to get a rhythm like they did on the last drive where they're able to march down the field. Chase Smith there with the sack, fourth sack for the Canes. They had three in their first two games. Bethea goes down the field, flag on the play, and they're going to say it's a catch, but whistles. And laundry everywhere. The pass was completed. I think a little bit of physicality on the edge from Miami right there might have been a little bit too physical, not allowing the receiver to get down the field. Offside, defense number 24. Penalty is declined. Third down. Number 24, Malik Bryant, and the catch there by Austin Yankowski. Yeah, Malik Bryan just uh, jumping the snap count right there. I thought they were going to get Smith on uh, bumping into the receiver on the outside right there. A 15 yard gain, third and two now. Jaden Bivens in the backfield. And he takes it, bounces it out to the left side. He'll pick up a first down, but a flag on the play. Two of them actually at the 33 yard line near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, when you have those plays. Holding. Offense number 34, 10 yard penalty, third down. George, what I was getting ready to say is when you have those plays that look like they are going off tackle and kind of in the middle, and now Bivens tries to now break out lows, you're going to get called for holding every single time. Right there, you see Christopher Grant, their guy that they like to bring in in short yardage, big number 34, just a little bit on the exterior with his hands to pick up that holding call. Yeah. Bryant as he was trying to come off the edge. Third and 12 from their own 23. And a new quarterback in there as Walter Simmons has checked in and he runs out of bounds. Not enough for the first down, obviously. Great. Bethune will have to punt. 
great job by George, Josh Horton getting after the passer right there, being able to, to flush Simmons out of the pocket and get the defense off the field. But they had took a hard hit on the couple plays ago. Now maybe Simmons has checked in because he started the first couple games and we knew they would play multiple quarterbacks, but this one bouncing towards the Canes and Ray Ray Joseph telling everyone to stay away. So Bethune will down it at the 27 yard line, a 50 yard punt, no return. Saturday, watch ACC Huddle throughout the day for all the news, notes, and highlights. It begins at 2 Eastern. The 90 minute pregame show that caps off the evening following FAU Clemson. Complete wrap up of all the day's action. Make sure you check out Kelsey and the crew. Coach Rick, part of the crew, we saw him honored today. Here at the University of Miami. Yeah, Coach Rick, back in the old stomping grounds, right? Yeah, speaking of old stomping grounds, as Emery Williams is back in the backfield. I mean, this is your homecoming, too, as we've got 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. We've got to talk about that this week with you. Mario Cristobal told us a great story that we're going to get to in the fourth quarter about your recruitment. That's a tease right there. So you're just going to put me on blast like that, oh, huh, like George? That. Like that. Just like I'm that, huh? the entire audience know. <laughs> Come the fourth quarter, we're letting it all out. Yeah. Late night in Miami. Coach Cristobal knows where everything's buried. You knew me as an 18-year-old kid coming out of Atlantic High School up the road in Delray Beach. You wondered if Chris Johnson would get in the game, and there he is. He is in the backfield with Emory Williams. Second and nine, Williams with time, goes to the sideline, completes it there to Tyler Harrell, who picks up a first down. A gain of 14. Yeah, Stefan Peterman right there, just playing off coverage. You know, this T Cookman defense, they like to play press bail with their cornerbacks. So if you're... It was okay. You know, there were some, you know, some things that really showed up in a positive way was the uh, second offense, you know, with the quarterback in there going down the field and scoring. We're going to get some more guys involved, play some more football. Thanks for the time. Thank you. There's Coach Cristobal with Maryland. As Ray Ray Joseph. A nice game there. Now, this was your coach. This was your guy who recruited you. Now, he was gone after that. Shortly thereafter, took the FIU head coaching job, his first head coaching job. But he told us a fun story about you and your recruitment, Orlando Franklin. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Maryland Payne with you here at Hard Rock Stadium as Miami is up big. Chris Johnson in the backfield with Emory Williams. And it was when Coach Cristobal was here and you were being recruited as Williams dumps it down again to Ray Ray. Picks up enough for the first down. Nope, they're going to say he's shy by about a yard. You know, but wait, hold on. Let me tell the story before, okay. before you try okay. to skew the uh, well, jury pool here. Well, I was just trying to say that, you know, Ray Ray Josephs was a, as an eighth grader playing on varsity in high school. But oh, okay. 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 I yeah. like that. I thought you were trying to steer me away from the conversation uh, about your A little bit of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Coach Cristobal tells us the story about during your recruitment, he was dating his then future wife, right? His wife, Jessica. And flags on the play and he was going to cook dinner for her on a night ball start offense number 52 five yard penalty third down number 52 for Miami is Luis Cristobal Jr. his nephew nephew of head coach oh you know he's getting a talking to oh absolutely and if he's yeah. not getting a talking to from head coach he's getting a talking to for Lou Cristobal Mario's brother that's true so third and <laughs> six but speaking of talking to so coach Cristobal's making gonna make dinner for his girlfriend who later becomes his future wife he's gonna cook dinner he's cooking pasta he's getting ready for the meal this that and the other then all of a sudden some young man oh Emery Williams goes down a violent hit there by Eddie Walls the defensive lineman for Bethune Cookman and he says he gets a call from a young Orlando Franklin and says coach I don't know if I'm gonna come down to Miami I may be going to play for the Florida Gators and coach Cristobal says I'll be right there and he calls his future wife and says young lady we're gonna have to cancel this dinner 
I got to go talk to this young man. He drove about an hour or so north to talk to you till allegedly like one in the morning, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, Coach Chris Ball got in that car and he was just like, hey, hold on. I'm going to call you back here in a second. Never got that call back, George. But about an hour and 15 minutes later, got a knock at the front door. Open it up and saw Mario Cristobal right there on my front on my front porch. There you are right there, Big O, with mom, offensive lineman here for a number of years, 39 starts. By the way, that last punt, 47 yards. That's the first punt for Miami today. But you, Orlando Franklin, just a incredible time. I'm glad. I'm sure you're glad you made that decision when Coach Cristobal came to visit you that you were going to stick with Miami. Oh, absolutely. Best four years of my life being a Miami Hurricane. Coach Cristobal has never stared me wrong. You talk about belief and trust, and I've trusted in this man since I've been 18 years old. I owe a lot of where I'm at today because of Mario Cristobal. Walter Simmons back at quarterback for Bethune. Basil taken down at the 25. Let's go down to Maryland. It's clear not only Orlando how much you appreciate Mario but when he talks to us I mean you saw that interview they did OK he said through three quarters up 41 nothing he lit up and Canes fans would never believe it if they've only watched these interviews where he is so frustrated about the smallest details the takeaway from Mario Cristobal telling that story is how much he loves his players even this far out from their careers and when he did go to FIU I'm interested Orlando where have you seen that show up as he's recruited guys just since he's been back to the U you know that that's the thing you know from day one when Mario Cristobal identifies a recruit he lets that recruit know that he's family you know Mario dug dug into every bit of my past and understood everything about me I look at him and I'm so excited that he's back here at the University of Miami because Miami's going to have a bright future under Coach Cristobal. Born and raised here in South Florida, Christopher Columbus High School, two-time champion as an offensive lineman for the Miami Hurricanes, recruited by Jimmy Johnson, played for Coach Dennis Erickson. And uh, a true Cuban-American, as he sent me some Cuban coffee before the game with my name on it. We, an assistant walked up to us pregame while we're on the field, kind of checking out the players, and... He comes up to me and says, this is from Mario. And it was a, a, a little small Cuban coffee, or as Coach Cristobal has told me in the past, Cuban rocket fuel, as he likes to call it. Mm, I'm still fired up. Love it. We, we had we it all a couple had a hours bit. ago. <laughs> we all had a little bit. You know, the, one of the, my things that I saw this week, yeah, and I heard Mario talk about when we were on a call with him on Zoom, yep. was after Miami had the big win last week against Texas A&M, he went and showed his players newspaper clippings and being praised and being, uh, you know, it's great. But he talks about being motivated internally or externally. Fit three and out for Bethune, 40 yard punt, no return for Ray Ray Joseph. We're back here in just a moment. Football, welcome back to ACC Network Thursday night college football presented by Dr. Pepper. Emory Williams with the handoff to Chris Johnson. Coach Cristobal told us, wait till you see that kid. He's a blur, and he definitely has a ton of speed out there. They are very excited about that young man after a four-yard gain there, second down upcoming. Yeah, a wholesale shift now, getting some of the younger guys on that offensive line, and Miami still being efficient in the run game with four yards right there. Coach Cristobal talked a lot about the young guys with us, talked about the scout team with us as well about how they look at that as a developmental process and the goal is to get six or ten players there as Emory Williams in trouble gets out of it and almost throws an interception dangerous pass there Iverson Clement almost comes up with it but he said he, they hope to find six or ten players that can help them during the season Emory took the hit there and was able to go and uh, again, a dangerous pass. Yeah, you want to see Emory Williams right there. Throw that football away, protect himself, and get rid of it a lot sooner. Not take unnecessary hits right there. You're up big. Go out here and try to be as efficient as possible with this offense, but don't put yourself in danger of, of taking a big hit. Third and six upcoming from the 36 yard line. Quick toss. Wide receiver screen there for Robbie Washington. And he picks up a first down. 
that play was made possible by Matthew McCoy. The big right tackle goes out there and gets a, a nice block to kick out the defender where now you're able to kind of cut back in there accelerate and get the first down. We're starting to see more of the youngsters out there. We saw Ray Ray Joseph from Miami Edison now Robbie Washington from Miami Palmetto. You want these guys to develop right as the game goes along. Hopefully everybody could go out there and run this offense efficiently now that you have your twos and threes out there. First and ten from the forty six and Johnson spun around for a short gain of about one. Look at this roster for the University of Miami. It's probably about 30 to 40 percent South Florida kids, which is about right. It's tough to keep everyone here. I mean, it was almost hard to keep you here. Yeah, South as Florida. As we told earlier, such great football played in this state, right? Yeah. And, and South Florida, you grow up watching the Miami Hurricanes, and now Miami's rumbling back, winning some football games. So. They're back at the top where kids are looking at this saying I want to go there and be there one day. Another catch there by Robbie Washington picks up another first down a gain of 18 on the play and the youngster doing a fantastic job in his action tonight. Just a great job accelerating off the line of scrimmage recognizing that Cook is playing zone sitting down in the zone and running and getting those tough yards after the catch. Washington chose Miami over Alabama Florida Georgia Michigan and LSU and Auburn as well. Emory Williams has been fairly impressive. Outside of a few plays here and there he dumps it off to Jaleel Skinner the tight end. His first action of the season you gets near the sticks. 10 yard game. You can see why this coaching staff is excited about Emory Williams. Right there, George was a triple option. Fake it to the running back, I could pull it myself or I could throw it. And Emory Williams decides to throw it and goes and gets nine. Williams, nine of 10 for 93 yards. Miami's offense, to your point, though, Shannon Dawson has been an incredible find. And him and Lance Gidry, both the defensive coordinator. So both coordinators great teachers and they're working with talent as Emory Williams misses his target there intended for Riley Williams the freshman tight end out of Portland Oregon played at IMG 6 6 2 40 and boy are they excited about him. We're starting to see all those players they're very excited for in the near future. Just nice double move fake out go, turn it up the field faked out the whole entire defense. And if you're Emory Williams you want that one back because you know six inches shorter and Riley Williams is walking across that goal line third and one for the Canes. But coach Cristobal told us that. His goal here is to. Win championships plural. That's what Miami does. And he said before he goes to his grave. He wants to be hoisting championship after championship. Yeah you know this is a guy that takes so much pride in the community where he grew up where he's able to see his family where you know his nephew grew up here as well. Lewis Cristobal Junior that's playing the center for them right now. And you could just tell everything about Coach Cristobal is about Miami and the University of Miami. Here's Mario Cristobal's wins versus ranked opponents. I remember that win against Ohio State at Oregon that was at Ohio State. Chris Johnson you see the speed down the sideline in the end zone touchdown Chris Johnson turned on the Jets and tacked on six more for the Canes. Chris Johnson an exciting young running back we've seen so many different running backs play for this Miami team but I think for me George this is a, this young man excites me the most. You know he has a track and field background and right there he showed you that track and field background getting to the corner. But the most impressive thing was breaking two tackles breaking one that could have been for a loss and also breaking one on the exterior to get in that end zone. Low snap kick is good though. Canes up 48 to nothing and the talent is on full display. 
for the University of Miami after a big win against Texas A&M. No letdown here. Dressed, in, coach. dressed up as a player in full garb. The kickoff by Borregalis through the end zone. Miami's nine drives, seven touchdowns. You got to be committed to wear that, man. That's a real fan right there. I don't care what anybody said. He knew that this game was going to get out of hand. He wanted to get in the game. ACC Network football continues Saturday at 3.30 Eastern with Northwestern against number 21 Duke, followed by FAU and Clemson at 8 Eastern. Both games also available on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Is that guy going to play? I mean, the Canes next week are headed to Temple. I think he has to get out there on the field and start warming up, man. <laughs> I mean, what do you think, Orlando? He's got the body? Yeah, he's got the body type. Get a couple snaps in that, at that linebacker position on this defense. Okay. All right. Bobby Washington Jr. might have something to say about that, though, we, wearing we, his number. We need to get Maryland on the case on that dude and find out what's up with all that. And we got whistles here. Walter Simmons at quarterback for Bethune. False start on the Wildcats. False start. Offense number 85, five yard penalty, first down. That's Yankoe, the tight end. Those are the ones that coaches hate because they just expect you to look at the football. Look at the football the whole entire time, especially when you're not connected to that offensive line. That should never happen. Lindsay in the backfield with Simmons. And off up the middle, not much there. Perhaps a loss of one on the play. Right there, Walter Simmons just confused. Do I pull it? Do I hand it off? He looked like he wanted to, to, to pull it at the last minute. But I'm happy that he just decided to hand it off because that's when fumbles occur. Simmons, of course, a transfer a couple years ago from East Carolina. Father. Walter Jr. played D tackle at Bethune Cookman, a legacy player. Get in Miami to show what shell they're in right there. Slowing the tempo down. Simmons drops back under pressure. He's going to take off and run. Down the sideline near the sticks and pushed out of bounds by Marcellus Pulliam, the linebacker for the Canes. And that's what Walter Simmons does. He has a great feel for understanding defenses, understanding the coverage. Right there, they went on a double count. So he knew that, hey, if I wanted to pull this down, I could go possibly try to get as much yards as possible with my legs. Third down and two, 16 yards on that last play, the longest for Bethune Cookman today from scrimmage. Crucial set for, uh, two yards right here. Let's see what the Cookman offense does. Trips receivers to the left. He throws to the right. He's got a man, and it is complete to Tink Boyd. A first down there for the young man out of Richmond, Virginia. Transfer from Virginia Tech. Richard, their field corner right there, just playing soft coverage and allowing Tink Boyd to get up on his heels and now come back to the football to, get, to gain that first down. A lot of youngsters out there for Miami's defense, obviously. You want to get those guys playing time. And for Bethune Cookman, as Simmons keeps again, heads for the sidelines, a short gain there. But if you're Miami, the objective coming into this one obviously is to win the game. Of course, you want to win the game. It was just a matter of you know, how they would win the game. But injury free. And right now, you know, they came in with a couple of injuries. A couple of guys didn't play. Nigel Lee Kelly, Mesador didn't play, Dean didn't play. But no injuries to speak of, to my knowledge, thus far tonight either. Yeah, that's huge for this whole entire football team because you don't want to. Picked off on the free play. Richard running it back and taken down near the 30 yard line. A flag on the play. That'll be against Miami. Yeah, I think they're going to get a false start right here on Miami. So I Offside, think it's going to come back. Defense number 39, five yard penalty, second down. That is Cyrus Moss. 
just into the, into the neutral zone right there. And this is what's going to keep Coach Cristobal and that coaching staff up at night because they, you want to be able to see these young guys go out there and find success. Fly around, play football, play loose, play free, and trust your training. But your training is also key in the football. Watch the football right there to not have a false start. Second and four now from the 43 yard line. Simmons drops back. He's flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his left, throws a ball too high for his intended target, Cameron Overton. Cameron Overton, 6'3, 186 from the Dallas, Texas area. His brother Khalil is the tight end on this team. I thought Walter Simmons was going to pull that one down, George. He had a lot of feel in front of him to go get those four yards to move the chains. He's got to be able to get that football down, though. Third and four. Kane's a little aggressive there on the line, almost jumped again. Well, you know how it is. When you're up big, it's time to pad the stats, try to get some sacks. <laughs> well, and some of these young guys don't get in there that often, to your point. Here comes pressure. Simmons finds his man. Down the sideline is Lindsey cutting back inside and taken down inside the 40 yard line. A first down there for Bethune Cookman with a little over three minutes left in this one. Great patience by Simmons right there. Fine and Terry Lindsay on the outside, but a, a, a better route by Terry Lindsay. Hats off to him staying focused in the game. 18 yard gain. Now their longest from scrimmage after that play. Miami showing blitz and Simmons will look at the sideline. Bethune Cookman just trying to get on the board here. They don't want to get shut out. Oh, and the incredible play there. Wow, Damari Brown like a heat-seeking missile. Last week we saw Jaden Davis have a huge play to disrupt the backfield. This week it's Damari Brown just coming in with bad intentions and meeting the running back as he's getting the football and just taking it to Lindsey right there. Wow, helmet popped off. That's a Sports Center top 10 play if you've ever seen one. You don't see the helmet fly that far that often. Simmons finds a man, he's open. It's Basil out of the backfield, makes a man miss, diving towards the end zone and taken down inside the five, down to the three yard line. And great job by Coach Joe Gabino, the offensive coordinator, calling that play again. You had a big explosive earlier in the drive, 18 yards, to now go get back to it and find another explosive play to put you on the goal line. Bobby Washington takes him down and up the middle. Not much there for Basil as they try to get him to pay off the drive. Here's the catch and run. Yeah, nice little wheel route out there in space. Miami's staying tight because they're trying to blitz right now. And great job just identifying a mismatch and a potential explosive play. But an even better job by Walter Simmons to with throwing that ball with touch to make sure that that's completed in bounds. We have a timeout. Miami. As they're looking to see if they can hold. Keep this shot from Clemson. It starts right here at 4 Eastern on the ACC Network. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin, Maryland Payne with you here. Miami up 48 0. That 40 yard pass by Bethune Cookman from Simmons to Basil was the longest play of tonight for either team. And Miami trying to hold here. We got flags on the play. Yeah, they're going to get a false, false start. start. Offense number 81. Five yard penalty, second down. That's Debanye Moore, the tight end. Yeah, just couldn't hold this water right there at the goal line. Tends to get a little bit loud, but him being the end man in the line of scrimmage, that could never happen, especially after a timeout. Second and goal now from the seven yard line for the Wildcats. Both teams with a lot to prove right here. If you're Miami's defense, you want to protect the goose egg. And if you're Cookman's offense, you want to get on the board. Simmons with the keeper tries to get to the pylon. He reaches in. Touchdown. Touchdown, Walter Simmons. A seven yard scamper. And the Wildcats are on the board here with 119 to go in the contest. 
love the play call. It's a run all the way. And Walter Simmons is trying to get to the edge. He knows that Miami's playing a tightened down form of defense because they've been blitzing a lot in the second half. And he uses the athleticism right there to get Cookman on the board. Walter Simmons first rushing TD of the season and the first of his career. The extra point is up and good. 119 to go in this one. Miami will get the ball back. Wait, flags on the play before we go anywhere. 10 plays, 75 yards, 5 minutes, 17 seconds off the clock for Bethune Cookman on their touchdown drive. A nice drive by Bethune Cookman with some explosive plays. Things that they could definitely build on, especially the wheel route with the running back coming out the backfield. There's no foul on the play. The extra point is good. Timeout. So Miami will get the ball one more time, leading 48 to 7 here at Hard Rock. We're one year apart in age, but we're inseparable as kids. It didn't matter that Wayne was autistic or had a mild case of. Down syndrome, they were best friends. So do that. Pondered to different ways to honor his brother. Has a big return there from Miami into Bethune territory. And Hurricanes football was always near the top of the list. He told the University of Miami it was the year UM was selected to play in the Champ Sports Bowl against Wisconsin in 2009. I'd never been to a bowl game before. And he said, I thought to myself, might as well do it there. About shoulder pads and everything. And he comes to every home game ever since Orlando and Maryland. Wow. I was in, I, that's the first game I played left tackle for the University of Miami. There you have it. In that game. There you have it. But what an incredible story. Thank yeah. you for the University of Miami for providing that for us. And all those details. Yeah, that's such a cool story. Um, you know, obviously you never want anything like that to happen, but. Shout out to this young man that keeps the, the honor of his brother of alive. Family first, man. By doing this. It, Miami games get hot. You know, it's for you to show up in the stands and, and have that equipment on, that's true commitment. But I know his brother's smiling down on him for sure. No doubt. And you would know because you, you've worn those that uniform proudly. And he wears it proudly as well to honor his brother who's no longer with us. May he rest in peace. 30 seconds to go in this one. Miami trying to run out the clock. Chris Johnson, who scored earlier on a touchdown, gets inside the 40. Two yard gain. Love the fact that Miami, right there, is still giving the opportunity to the young guys to get better. You know, they could have came out and took a knee, but you got to love that these guys have played all the way through the whistle. No drop off for this Canes team on a short week. You know, coming out here and finding a way to get it done tonight. Tyler Van Dyke, 19 to 23, 247 yards, two TDs in the air, one on the ground. Xavier Restrepo, six catches for 120 yards, third career, 100 plus yard game, 32 first downs. 